Europe is packed full of some incredible roller coasters. And over the past several years, I've had the opportunity to ride tons of them across a dozen countries on the continent. It made it super difficult to come up with a top 25, especially when the quality level is so high. Plenty of these rides cracked my top 25 overall. But after a considerable amount of thought and a lot of rearranging, this is what I came up with. But first, I do have to mention there is a bit of a technicality here. I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion or not, but I have elected to exclude Nemesis from this list because the version we know is currently defunct. We don't know how this new version is going to feel. I like to compare it to the old version of The Incredible Hulk versus the new version. I love Nemesis and it would have placed here, but just because they're changing it up, I want to focus on some other rides that are still the same. So let's kick things off with the number 25 spot, Woden Timber Coaster at Europa Park. I love how it twists low to the ground, features some great pops of airtime intertwined with blue fire, and really, really good theming in the queue. Europa Park just does an amazing job with that sort of stuff, and Woden is definitely one you're going to want to do over and over and over again. Taking the number 24 spot is Fluke von Novgorod, otherwise known as the Curse of Novgorod. This is a Gerstlauer Eurofighter with one of the quickest launches in the world. You start off in this dark ride section, go through this little dip, and then take off in an incredible quick speed straight outside into a little top hat some turns and then the second half of the ride is completely in the dark vertical lift on beyond vertical drop the best way i could describe this ride is like an upgraded mystery mine if you're familiar with that ride at dollywood so let's go from one launch coaster to another this one i think being intended for families but it's really really good so i didn't care is juvelin at jur summerland one of the most underrated rides in europe is not very tall at all you're so low to the ground the majority of the coaster is just fast paced transitions but this whole middle section is like in turbo mode. The best comparison I could honestly think to make for it is something like Maverick, how it just goes rapid fire back and forth. Juvan was crazy. It was way better than I expected. Definitely one of those sleeper hit rides you gotta do. At 22, we have Osiris at Park Asterix. This is a really strong B&M invert. I love the layout that they went with here. Very unconventional. It just looks incredible in this plaza that Park Asterix has set up here. They do such a great job with theming and this Egyptian look is just so photogenic. Smooth ride, great forces, underrated invert in my opinion but it's not as good as black mamba at fantasia land this is my favorite invert in europe yes even over the original nemesis if nemesis were on here i'd honestly probably put it right between osiris and black mamba but i just love how black mamba is woven in with the african section of this park and i said osiris has an unconventional layout black mamba's is even more unconventional twisting around this rock work diving under pathways stunning ride with a fantastic pace just barely cracking the top 20 is rushabanan at tivoli gardens this one is very different from from every other ride on this list. And I almost have a sweet spot for this thing. This is one of the oldest roller coasters in the world. It doesn't have very impressive stats, but what it does do is give fantastic airtime. There's barely a restraint on this thing. And as you're going over each of these hills, you just float up out of your seat. Sometimes it's a little scary, like you don't expect it at all. And when you factor in that the ride is controlled by a brake man who literally rides on the train with you, this coaster is just so unique, I had to put it on the list. Taking the 19th spot is Furious Baco at Port Aventura. This is a short ride, absolutely. Absolutely. but it is intense. Wicked fast launch using hydraulics. It's rare that you see those nowadays. You're flying so low to the ground through a single inversion, then swooping across the water makes for an iconic entry experience at the park. I know this ride is not for everyone. It definitely is on the rougher side, but the coaster just exceeded my expectations and is one that I want to do over and over again. At number 18, we have the ride with the most inversions in the world. It's the Smiler at Alton Towers. And talk about a unique experience. This felt like two roller coasters in one, broken up by a lift hill splitting them halfway through. Seven inversions in the first half, seven in the second. An absolute twisted mess of track. You have no idea where the coaster's going, where it came from, and it's got one of the most demented themes you've ever seen. One of those mesmerizing attractions that is both fun to watch as well as experience. Just keep your head forward. Number 17, we have the tallest and fastest roller coaster in Europe, Red Force at Ferrari Land. If you're familiar with rides like Topfield Dragster or King Ka, you pretty much know how this ride works. You take off down a really fast launch, up a huge tower, down a vertical drop, and that's it. But it's really good. Unlike those other two, this does use LSMs to build up to that speed. As of when this video is being made, it is the fastest roller coaster in the world to use LSMs for now. And with lap bars only, you just feel so exposed. Great view at the top, huge adrenaline rush. And barely missing the top 15 is Paratin at Jersey Summerland. This is an Intamin Megalite, the only one in Europe, but you can find this clone layout at a couple other points around the world. It's not super tall or anything, but it's a little beast. I like to call this thing miniature I-305. You gray out on that low to the ground first turn, some really great airtime hills. This is an example of a ride that was kind of ahead of its time, especially when you see other manufacturers kind of doing their take on the experience, such as Vekoma and their Wildcat model of Phonix. Obviously, this one features inversions while Paratin does not, but this was my first introduction to like modern 
modern-day Vacoma thrill rides, and it did not disappoint. Well, maybe it doesn't quite pull the forces that Paratin does. Phonix just has an incredible, diverse mix of elements. Everything just works here. It's so smooth. It's got airtime. The station fly-through is so cool, and it just looks amazing nestled in the trees of Far Up Summerland. And let me tell you, it will not be the last new Vacoma to make this list. But at the number 14 spot, we have my favorite B&M in Europe, and that is Shambhala. This is one of the tallest and fastest roller coasters in Europe, and all it is is towering parabolic airtime hills. So much floater air. It's so graceful, but it's also really fast. And it's got one of the more unique layouts for a B&M Hyper. I just love what they did with this thing, and Puerto Ventura does great theming as well. The coaster just looks fantastic in this park, especially the way it just fits in that skyline with Dragon Con. And number 13, we have what might be a controversial take for some. It's Tener to Zeus at Park Estrix. This is a CCI wind coaster that was redone by the Gravity Group, and it kind of combines the best of both worlds. I know there are some that preferred this coaster before the refurb. I never got to do it prior to this, but I loved this experience. The retracking was so smooth. The pacing on this ride was fantastic. Those Timberliner trains allow for ejector airtime, and you absolutely get thrown out of your seat. And there's a backwards row, and there's just so few roller coasters these days where you can get an experience like that. And Zeus Backwards is incredible. That might have been one of my favorite experiences I had in Europe, was doing that thing backwards. At the number 12 spot, we have Schwartes Karnen at Hansa Park. This is the largest Gerslauer in the world, towering 200 plus feet in the air. It has such a fast paced layout with that entire outdoor section just being so low to the ground, wicked airtime. Yeah, it's not the smoothest thing out there, but it just flies through that course. Not to mention it's got a couple surprises up its sleeve and that only adds to the terror. And just barely missing the top 10 is Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. Now, when I first experienced this ride, it totally exceeded my expectations. I said it was my favorite steel coaster in Europe that I had experienced at the time, but after going back and experiencing it again, it wasn't quite as good as I remember, but that doesn't mean that's a bad ride at all. It was like old school Intamin at its best. While technology has continued to improve, this thing still kicks. So many great airtime hills and an all around fun layout. Which brings us to our top 10. At the number 10 spot, we have FLY or Fly at Fantasia Land. This is the next generation flying coaster from Vacoma. And what they did with this thing is a technological marvel. It is a spectacle to watch the moment you step foot into Rookberg. You see this thing going all around you, much like the Smiler. You have no idea where it came from or where it's going. It is such a cool experience. And the theming is just unreal. The only reason why this ride isn't higher is because flying coasters are not usually my favorite, but I really enjoyed Fly. What a freaking cool ride. I hope Vacoma sells a bunch more of these things. But even if they do, it'll be tough to top this one. So let's go from one modern Vacoma to another with Let Coaster at Legendia. I think when this ride first came out, this is when people realized that Vacoma meant business, that they were here to do some great thrill rides. And boy, did this thing pack it in because it is so intense. The G-forces that this thing pulls is unbelievable. You gray out so hard at the beginning of this ride, immediately after that wicked first drop, all the different elements, great airtime, inversions. It is the reason to visit this park. And when we are there, we were like the only ones in the station. So we just rode this thing over and over and over again. And I loved every second of it. And number eight, we have Conda at Wallaby, Belgium. This is Intamin's latest mega coaster. Features an Exhibition G4 style first drop, but done even better. Huge camelback airtime hill, an awesome outer bank turn, a first of its kind non-inverting cobra roll, and then a snake-like twisted ending where it's just right up against the ground, ejecting you out of your seat. This is very much a modern day version of like Goliath at Wallaby Holland, which spoiler alert, did not make this list. Great coaster, but when you see how far Intamin has come, this thing is just oh so good. And taking the seventh spot is our first of three RMCs in Europe, Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This is the smallest of the three. It sends riders upside down five different times including a very unique first set of inversions. It's a nice long ride with so many different airtime moments, every single one of them shooting you up out of your seat. Fast paced twists and turns, especially during that ending sequence. You're just riding through the structure. Makes for some great head and hand choppers. They really killed it with this transformation. And one spot above it is Zadra at Energylandia. I know, hot take. Zadra just barely misses my top five. I love this coaster. It was really good. And I really had to think about this one, but there were a couple coasters in Europe that I did prefer over this one. But I tell you what, this thing has power and speed like none other. There is so much force that you have as you are just maneuvering through these different elements. Probably the best stall in the world. An incredible first drop. Crazy inversions. And you hit the brake run so hard. It is unbelievable. Not to mention 
is just iconic. Look at this thing. That's like kind of terrifying. Awesome ride, but you know what? It wasn't my favorite in Energylandia. That I give to Hyperion, the Intamin Hyper Coaster. This is located right at the front of the park, and it might as well be European Sky Rush. It has an insane first drop that just feels like it lasts forever. Guys, this thing is almost a giga coaster. It's that tall. Even bigger and crazier airtime hills than Conda. And I loved Conda, but it wasn't Hyperion. This coaster exceeded my expectations in every single way. It has the best of both worlds with huge elements at the beginning and then low, tight ones at the end. Crazy, awesome roller coaster. It's rides like this where you're just like, man, Intamin is crazy. And they kept it up because there's still more Intamins to come here. At number four, we have Terran at Fantasialand. I love this ride. Much like Fly, Fantasialand has combined roller coaster with theming to just weave this thing among all this rock work. You're flying past buildings and you're walking among the pathways, not knowing where the roller coaster is going or where it just came from. Sounds familiar, right? It's got two really good launches. It's not an airtime centric experience. It's more about those rapid fire transitions, the twists and turns, but it just works here. Which brings us to our top three. And number three, we have Taiga at Linamaki. This is another Intamin multi-launch coaster. And I had to go back and forth whether I liked this or Terran more, but I had to give it to Taiga because I do think it has the superior layout. But man, if you could put like the theming of Terran around Taiga, oh, it'd be perfect. This roller coaster features great inversions, some insane airtime hills, some wild transitions that just yank you from one side to the other, and it's all as you're riding along this hillside. There's so much track packed into this small space, and how they managed to come up with some of these elements that just look and feel so different is really, really cool. This is absolutely my favorite Intamin in Europe. But we still got two more roller coasters to talk about. Taking second place is Wildfire at Colmarden. This was the first roller coaster by Rocky Mountain Construction to open in Europe, and it's still my favorite. It's the only one of the three to use their topper track, so this is technically a wood coaster. And it has such a great mix of moments, an epic first drop that takes place right after this gorgeous panoramic turn. The view you get up from there is amazing. An epic stall, some great outer banks, a dive off the cliffside, because this is absolutely a terrain coaster. It's built into this crazy rock work. It looks so cool and is located at a zoo. It's so weird. This thing didn't have a line either time I went to Colmarn. It's definitely my most ridden roller coaster in Europe just because I ride it so much every time I go. And when I first visited Europe to ride roller coasters, this was my favorite, but it has since been dethroned by Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland de Pan. Going into this Mach Rise Extreme Spinner, I knew it would be good, but I did not think it would be that good. Let me tell you, this is one of the single greatest roller coasters on the planet. And I would not judge anyone for having it as their number one overall because it is pure insanity. Each of these elements are great on their own, but when you factor in spinning ride vehicles that vary based off of weight, so this is gonna be an experience that changes every single time you do it, it is so rewritable because it's got ejector airtime hills, some wild inversions, and overall fantastic pacing. So there you have it, my 25 favorite roller coasters in Europe. A couple honorable mentions I'll do. Number one, Helix at Liseberg, just barely missing my top 25. There's also thrilling mocks like Icon and Blue Fire that are a lot of fun, but if any of them were going to make it, it would have been Helix. Eye Speed is also really good. That's an Intamin launch coaster at Mirabilandia in Italy. It's got a great first half, but a lackluster second half, so that's why that one missed the cut. And Carajo, Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster with a really fast launch and overall great elements. But there are so many fun rides across the continent with still many more on the way. I mean, look at Tutatis and Gotham City Escape. I'm sure whenever I get around to riding those, they'll absolutely be able to find a place on here. So expect an updated ranking at some point. But as right now, that's what I got. So let me know down in the comments below, what are your favorite roller coasters in Europe? Do you agree with the ones that I came up with? And if you haven't gotten the chance to experience any of these yet, which ones do you want to ride the most? And of course, stay tuned for more rankings here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.